right, all right, everyone. Another new day and another brand new all-time high for the S&P 500. The stock market is really starting to heat up, and this is a great thing if you're into short-term trading. Uh, over the past three years, Chinese stocks have lost six trillion dollars and the Chinese government is uh, thrown in the towel and they're uh, considering pumping their market. So we're definitely going to touch on that. But of course, we're also going to touch on Netflix's earnings report today in their $5 billion deal with the WWE. Don't forget, Tesla reports earnings tomorrow, but overall volatility is increasing and this is exactly what you want to see if you're into short-term trading. So with that being said, Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, Netflix is pumping here in After Hours, and we'll get right into that in just a few minutes. But Mike, you know, we've been talking about these China stocks for a long time now. And I know that especially over the past couple days, you were hitting on them in the nightly videos. And man, they are starting to fly up with a ton of momentum. BABA usually only rises around 0.93% on average each day when it rises. Today, it was up 7.8%. It had a huge move in pre-market, and then whenever the market was open today, it actually had some pretty good continuations as well, and it closed pretty high. So, Mike, there's some great news with China here. Looks like they're going to be trying to mobilize money and get their uh, overall economy back to where it was, right? Like you said, so much money is leaving that Chinese market, and it's been leaving for a while. For about three years now, it's lost $6 trillion since 2021. So, You've got to be very, very careful whenever you're looking at the Chinese market right now, but it's so low. There's a lot of opportunities out there, and we're even seeing a lot of big players like Jack Ma, which is a co-founder of Alibaba, buying up a ton of shares. So we are seeing a, an influx of good news from the Chinese market right now, and with them trying to prop up the market, you know, imagine this is kind of like what the Federal Reserve was doing with our markets whenever we went on that crazy run in 2021, except they're doing it in their own way, right? And it's always huge whenever, you, you know, the the government is trying to pump the market. They can do all sorts of things in the background, and China's been trying to get their uh, markets to turn around for a while now. Yeah, the government is uh, thrown in the towel, like I said. They're sick and tired of seeing their stock prices fall day after day and week after week and honestly, at this point, year after year. But uh, like you said, you know, the Chinese government's definitely trying to pump that market higher. And uh, basically, we saw Chinese stocks like Alibaba, uh, Baidu, JD, and a lot of other ones move to the upside in a pretty big way today. Yeah, those were some insane runs. Like I said earlier, Baba really beat its average percent rise, and that was a huge run there. And I know a lot of people love these EV stocks out of China. NIO even started running up a little bit today. Whenever it opened, the stock ran up a ton. From yesterday's close to that high there, it was up like 14, almost 15%. And then it obviously pulled back. It only closed at 3.8%, but still, that was still a uh, great move to the upside there by NIO. And you can pick them Almost any China stock will do Queb, the ETF up 4.8%, doing fantastic there. So I'm glad to see these Chinese stocks starting to turn around. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows quite yet. But I will say, whenever we go out like to like the daily chart on Baba, it's good to see it coming up off of lows and getting back above 70 and back into that better range up here. Yeah, and another thing worth noting is that when Chinese stocks actually uptrend, they tend to like cluster with like big green days. So going forward, keep a close eye on Baba and all the other Chinese stocks because, you know, like I said, when they move, they tend to move for multiple days at a time. Yeah, and you can see multiple different scenarios like that on JD's chart even like right here uh, it wasn't like it went up for five weeks straight but you know there were two to three weeks of some solid uptrend there from around 25 up to 29 bucks that's actually pretty big percentage wise a lot of people would probably discount this but man that is actually like a 18% move to the upside there and that's just for shares imagine with options the uh, the potential on some of these China stocks I know some of Baba's uh, options were on fire today among many you know, there's even outliers like TCEHY, which is Tencent, up 5%. Even those options were on fire today. So there's a lot of China stocks out there. Go ahead and research some tonight. But I would say my favorite out there is obviously Baba. And then, Mike, wouldn't you say Queb is a good uh, cluster of stocks or a good ETF to give you a lot of exposure? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're looking for individual names, I think Baba's among the better ones, just like you said. But if you want the more broad-based approach, KWEB is uh, also pretty solid. Looking at Baba's options today, a lot of them popped up by like a thousand percent or more. And then also stick with us to the end of the video because we have a pretty big, big money trade related to these uh, Chinese companies. And it's very uh, head turning to say the least. But Tom, we also have to talk about the craziness going on in after hours right now with Netflix as they just reported earnings. Yeah, look at this move. And in after hours right now, from close to where we are now, Netflix is up around like 7.35%. That is a huge run to the upside. Now, whenever you look at their earnings, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but they beat on many of the key things that most traders care about, like total membership expected and subscriber numbers. They beat those estimates by quite a bit with total memberships expected. It came in at 260.8 million versus a 256 million expectation that is a good beat there their revenue also beat a little bit which is good that's always fantastic to see revenue growing now eps did not beat the expectation came in uh, under by around 11 cents so but i'll say this the uh, total memberships and just the subscriber numbers in general are better in my opinion than the actual eps number so keep that in mind i'm glad to see that they're moving up in after hours too and they actually broke five hundred dollars which was a pretty key level to break today i was glad to see him get back above there and if they keep holding that uh, into tomorrow i think there could be more opportunity for uptrend sounds good and then tom you can't forget about that five billion dollar deal with the wwe either yeah, this is nuts. So apparently Netflix bought the rights for WWE Raw. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw has been around for a long time with the WWE. I actually went to one one time in like the third grade. Um, I used to love their action figures and stuff, but it's cool. They're buying it. Um, I'm not really a big WWE watcher anymore, but for $5 billion, I was looking up some sports teams like the St. Louis Cardinals. It's worth more than even like the Cardinals for uh, the, you know, for the rights to Raw here. So I found that very interesting, but nonetheless, Mike, it's a huge deal for them and it just brings more to their platform. They just continue to grow and they continue to add more and more, I guess, uh, streaming services and more um, content for their uh, subscribers. Absolutely. And it's a 10 year partnership with uh, the WWE. I know at, at points, Netflix can uh, take a lot of flack, but one thing that I have to give them is they are constantly innovating. Like this prime example with them trying to take like a big step into live events with WWE Raw, or even like how they're like, trying to adapt a little bit more into like the video game side of things as well. But either way, keep a close eye on Netflix for tomorrow for a potential like earnings continuation setup. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm really glad it broke 500. I'm actually glad you brought up the games too. I was looking, you could play like GTA San Andreas on your phone or something. I was like blown away with uh, some of the streaming capabilities of these games now. But um, yeah, Mike, Netflix is going to be fun. And whenever I look at Netflix, it, it hit around 530 and after hours here. So realistically, it would be nice to break above that and continue up. But even if it dips down and starts bouncing around like 500, that could be a big support to watch out so honestly i'm just gonna watch like 500 and 530 if it chops between there it's almost like a no play though i really want to see that good momentum coming in tomorrow morning to get us that nice push to the upside in a prime example of that is rtx so they reported earnings today and the stock blasted off right from open and there was a whole lot of opportunity for like a short-term call trade. So essentially with Netflix for tomorrow, if you're looking to play the earnings move, you want the setup to be like exactly like RTXs from today. Yeah, that was fantastic. Look at how it popped up in pre-market and then it broke that pre-market high on that move it opened and ended up extending up a few points from there, which whenever you're looking at options, a few points on like an $89 stock can be a pretty big move. So uh, yeah, watch that for Netflix. Hopefully it can break above like 530, like we said, or at least bounce off the $500 support and give us some good opportunities. And with Netflix reporting earnings, Mike, there still is some big earnings for the rest of the week. 
week like Tesla tomorrow in After Hours. I know so many people are going to be watching Tesla. That's going to be a super important report. It's my favorite report of the week. I would say Intel is a close second, but uh, Tesla is going to be huge. Hopefully they can report good numbers and, and a good guidance maybe with some of their truck numbers. You know, I hopefully they're reporting uh, good production and uh, that everything's going smoothly with that. So we'll have to see that because Tesla's been kind of down in the dumps lately. So it'll be interesting to see if they can make themselves kind of claw out of this uh, dump that they've been in. No doubt. What makes me the most excited right now is how we're actually seeing stocks like move in a meaningful way, whether it's the Chinese stocks, whether it's Netflix, whether it's RTX, or even the market at all-time highs. One thing worth noting, though, is that in the market, even though like it's making new all-time highs, the best way to trade this type of price action is to find the stocks where the money is just, you know, bombarding into and ride that giant wave of momentum. RTX was a great example from today. Bobble was a pretty good example as well. Netflix, you know, another decent example. But instead of just looking at the market right now, because even though it's it's making all-time highs, the movement has been a little bit a little bit choppy. Uh, just find the stocks that actually are moving, and uh, that's where the money is. Yeah, exactly, and you you uh, hit it on the head with some of those stocks there, Mike, and there's been so many lately running. I know that even a lot of these growth stocks have been running up pretty much lately. I know today some of them pulled back. I'll be keeping a lot of them on watch for tomorrow, like Square, a few others. I know Snowflake was a pretty hot stock today, too, up 3.27%, and we're seeing a lot of money flow into, like, plug and charge point today which was pretty strange plug was up 30 percent that is one hell of a run unfortunately plugs almost like a penny stock now but uh <laughs> but i digressed uh but these i guess charging stocks ev stocks are really killing it here 10 percent for charge point so there's some more stocks out there if you guys are looking for like where that money was running today but the highlight was really those china stocks mike like baba's gonna be awesome and we're gonna have to talk about it again because i I know it's one of your plays for tomorrow. All right. All right. So one stock I'm watching very closely right now is ITB. Now, this is basically an ETF of a bunch of home construction companies. So basically, it's home building stocks. And uh, it got smacked around pretty hard today. It was down around 5%. And this one falls on average by like 1%. So a 5% drop uh, definitely gets some attention to say the least. But basically... Um, you know, these stocks or home building stocks have been moving in a pretty strong way over the past two years or so. And the housing market has just been like slowing down a little bit. And uh, DHI didn't have necessarily the best day today either as they reported earnings and they fell by like n over 9%. So that's pretty big. They're a pretty big home building company. But when you see like one of the uh, biggest home building companies like DHI fall by 10%, with this much volume too, it is definitely a little bit alarming. So either way, I'm looking at ITB for a continuation to the downside for tomorrow. And I would love to see a break below uh, the low of day today, or you, or you could even just say like the $99 support. Yeah, that's pretty big. That 99 area right there is huge. So I'll be watching for a break too. That daily chart is insane on these uh, construction slash home building ETFs. To see them starting to fall off like this, it could uh, end up being pretty bloody over the next few days, I, I have a feeling. So I'll keep it on the radar, Mike. Um, another stock I'm watching is AMD, and this one's going to be featuring book maps. So uh, with AMD here, we can see in the short term, there's been a lot of resistance as we get up to this 169.50 to 170 area. Now, as we go over here to book map, this is huge because look at right where I said 169.50, 170. It's huge up here at the top you can see all these sellers stacked up there's thousands upon thousands of sellers stacked up overhead at 170 now there's a lot of ways that i'm going to be watching this tomorrow if we end up breaking 170 we start to see some solid momentum up i will actually look at calls on amd my preferred way to play this would be to watch for a rejection get another rejection here and then trade it down under like 167.50 right around that hit around the end of the day so if we could get under there i would look at puts but you know really with overall market starting to run up to new highs we might have to just watch for that 170 break and um you know keeping an eye on netflix and a few other stocks tomorrow morning will be important to kind of see where that overall direction is going 
Sounds good. Uh, as you uh, said a couple minutes ago, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Baba, and it's to the upside. I've been talking about this stock nonstop over the past week, and it is doing pretty well. But I'm looking for a continuation here. I would love to see a break above like $74.50 and, like and then just continued momentum. That's the name of the game. We're looking for good price action at open and just a lot of volume coming in to push the stock higher. But either way, I have uh, some pretty close eyes on this one for tomorrow. Yeah, it's a great play in the short term. If we see a nice continuation, I think it'll be a really fun opportunity. And Mike, I know that these China stocks, they like to gap up and down quite often. So how would you play this one Like, if there was going to be like a, a gap, kind of like we saw this morning? Exactly, and that's a phenomenal question. And I think it goes back to the stock that I've referenced a ton in this video already, but RTX. That stock also had a pretty big gap today, but what made it worth trading is that price action right from open. You really couldn't ask for better price action uh, with RTX today from open, and you could say the same thing about any other gap setup. Uh, you really just want to see the stock continuing to move, even if it gaps up once the market opens, because that's when uh, you know the big money comes into it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I knew there'd be a lot of questions about that, so figured I'd ask it there. But uh, getting into my next play, I'm looking at PENN. -E uh, this stock is actually consolidating a little bit over the past few days, right at $24. This is Penn Gaming. They run ESPN Bet now uh, with the deal with Disney. So I'll be watching for them to break out above 24. It's a bit of a triple top going on, and it's a huge resistance. So if we have solid momentum above there tomorrow, continue to look at calls. That daily chart's starting to look pretty good again 100% but Tom you already know it's about that time for the momentum plays and with the first one we have end phase to the upside yeah, Enphase had a pretty hot day today. I know a lot of these uh, renewable energy companies or I guess solar companies, whatever you want to call them, did very well here. Uh, go ahead and make them break above 112.50 tomorrow. That was pretty big intraday resistance. All right, with the next one, we have ExxonMobil also to the upside. Yeah, Zom was fire today. I know the bot had a fantastic move on Zom this morning as well. But yeah, if Zom can get back above 98.20 tomorrow, just above that small intraday high, then go ahead and look at a, at a move to the upside. Uh, these oil stocks were on fire. Perfect. And with the last one, we have TLT for both directions. TLT, old face as we like to say. Uh, watch for them to break above $94. That's a solid level. We've been watching that level a lot over the past couple weeks. If it gets back above there, go ahead and eye up some calls. It had a low of day around recent support as well, right at 93.50. Multiple hits off of there. So if it breaks under 93.50 and 93.45, then look at puts. All right. Well, you guys heard Tom. We have the downside level for puts and we have the upside level for calls. And that is with TLT. Don't forget about ExxonMobil and Enphase with their upside levels there. But uh, these are our momentum plays for the day. These setups are only potential trades if they break the levels Tom listed. But Tom, it's now time for uh, the part of the video that everyone has been waiting for. And that is the $2.4 million big money trade of the day. And we are looking at ticker symbol a S H R. So a lot of you guys are probably going to hear this and be like, what stock is that? I've never heard of this company before, but basically it is an ETF of a bunch of like uh, big China stocks. And uh, basically it looks at the top 300 uh, biggest and most liquid Chinese stocks. And as you'd expect, it has been uh, taken to the woodshed over the past three years. But given the recent bullishness you can say uh, we saw a big money trader put 2.4 million dollars into the ashr 23 strike call options that expire on june 21st of 2024 these options are close to the money and they have a good amount of time so this is one that i'll be watching uh, very closely over the coming uh, weeks and months yeah, and with these China stocks getting so beaten down in the short term, I could really see them starting to come back up here, especially if the government continues to do um, more and more things to continue to push that market higher, right? Like they like they're talking about now, they're trying to allocate or mobilize, as they're saying, a lot of funds. It 
278 billion dollars or 2 trillion won that's quite a bit so uh, we have to really watch what the government's doing over there and they've been trying to do things like this over the past couple of years as well i've seen multiple things go on where you know they were uh cutting taxes on trading a little bit and uh, multiple different things regulation wise to try and bring those markets up and it's good to see him finally uh i guess like mike said earlier throwing in the towel and just you know trying to go all in finally so let's see if this can be if this can end up being where the bottom is and where we start to see that nice uptrend come in but i love it with ashr just keep in mind with this stock if you go to an intraday chart and maybe like an hourly or even like a 15 minute it looks pretty wild right it has its main moves from gap ups and gap downs baba moves a little bit more intraday other china stocks move more intraday this one's going to be more of a play that you have to swing right it's out to june and you have to kind of play those gaps because it just doesn't have that intraday momentum like Baba or some of those others do. Good stuff there. But with everything being said, Tom, the market is heating up in a very good way. The Chinese stocks are moving. Netflix is moving. The market's at all-time highs. And we have Tesla earnings tomorrow after the bell. So it should be a very exciting rest of the week. But another thing worth noting is that if you want to get in on the action, check out the stocked up trading floor. Basically, we have an army of bots that find out exactly where the money is flowing on a day to day basis. We had a phenomenal trade with uh, Exxon Mobil call options today, which went from 136 all the way up to 183. Very easy trade. And our bots uh, on Friday absolutely hit it out of the park with SMCI. Those options literally increased by 300,000 percent it was definitely one of the craziest trades I've, I've seen in years and of course not every day is like that but our bots find out where the money's flowing and, and they capitalize on it big time but while we're in the discord let's give our giant shout out to today's member of the day amazing marley you've been in the chat for some time now you've been a phenomenal member and you're super active and super positive so tom and i want to give you a special shout out thank you for uh, being a great member of the community yeah, thank you, Amazing Marley. You're an awesome member. I know that you post up quite a bit, so thank you for being so active. And yeah, thanks for being part of the trading floor, too. Don't forget to show up to the uh, live event tomorrow night, too. We have a live Q&A going on at 9 p.m. Eastern, so get ready for that. And uh, yeah, let's go, Amazing Marley. There we go. Well, thank you all so much for watching. It should be an exciting rest of the week. Uh, one last thing with the economic schedule. There isn't uh, too much going on tomorrow, which is a good thing. We're all in the clear. So keep that in mind. But besides that, let's uh, keep up this great momentum throughout the rest of the week.